Hi there everyone and welcome back to National 5 Biology, Unit 3, Life on Earth. So today we're going to be looking at key area 4, quite a short key area called energy in ecosystems. So as a bit of a recap from a previous lesson, hopefully you remember this diagram that we looked at from food chains and what food chains show. So we have a green plant right at the start of the food chain that's a producer, it produces its own energy from sunlight. That is then consumed by the first consumer, a primary consumer, in this case a zebra, which is then consumed by a secondary consumer. And hopefully you remember that these arrows show the direction of energy flow in a food chain. Okay, and that's why we have this direction of it, it's showing you what is the energy is moving from the producer to a primary consumer to a secondary consumer, sometimes a tertiary consumer as well. What we're going to be looking at in this lesson though is a bit more detail about the amount of energy that is passed on and how we can look at that in greater detail. So to start off with, not all of the energy that an organism gains by consuming another organism is actually passed on to that organism. Quite a lot of the energy is lost. So energy can be lost through three different ways and you need to know all three of them. So it can either be lost through maintaining or generating body heat it can be lost through movement, maybe running away from a predator or just moving in any other sort of way. Or it can be lost through undigested material. So this would be things like dead skin or bones or poo. Anything that is not being passed on to the organism that consumes you, that's lost energy. That's energy that in some ways has been wasted. One quick note for this though is, although some of this energy is lost, there are some organisms that rely on this lost energy and use this lost energy. These organisms are called decomposers. So you may have heard of decomposers before, but what they do is they consume any dead plant or animal material or waste, and they are found on all levels of a food chain. If there's been undigested material, there could be it could be a, a rotting carcass of an animal or of a plant that's decomposing. These decomposers come across and they use that energy. So it is being used in some way. Again, a useful bit of terminology to remember. It comes up sometimes in questions. If we have another look at this fairly familiar diagram now though, of the grass, the zebra, the lion, and the arrows that show the direction of energy flow, you need to know the the percentage of energy that's lost and the percentage of energy that is passed on through the levels of a food chain. So 90% of the energy is lost as you move up each level. It's a lot of energy, meaning that only 10% of energy is actually passed on to the organism that consumes the previous organism. This 10% of energy is the energy that is used by an organism for growth. So in this example here that we've looked at, when the zebra consumes the grass and that energy is passed on, only 10% of the energy from that plant is passed on to the zebra. And again, when the lion eats the zebra, only 10% of that energy from the zebra is actually passed on to the lion. What we're going to look at is how to actually show this loss of energy, the, the amount of energy being passed on to each level instead of looking at food chains. And to do that, we're going to be looking at something called pyramid diagrams. So food chains are really useful for seeing information such as producers, consumers, the number of levels in a food chain and the interaction between different organisms in a food chain. But pyramid diagrams are good at showing the energy that is being passed between each level. Okay, we're going to look at two different pyramid diagrams. We're going to look at pyramid of numbers and we're going to look at a pyramid of energy. They both work in a very, very similar way, so let's get started with them. Both these pyramids will be in a vaguely pyramid shape. Okay, you will have your producers always at the bottom, just like in a food chain. Then above the producers, you will have your primary consumer, then a secondary consumer, and at times you'll have a tertiary consumer. So each block up in the pyramid is the next level in the food chain. What tends to happen is that in a period of numbers, you will see the number of organisms on each level of a food chain. So the number of producers, the number of primary consumers, the number of secondary consumers. And usually you will get this pyramid shape where as you go up the food chain, the number of animals in the level decreases. 
So going back to the previous diagram, there was much more grass than there were a zebra. There were more zebra than there were a lion. So let's look at some examples here. So in this pyramid of numbers, you could start off with grass. It's a producer, it's at the base of a pyramid, it's at the start of a food chain. In this case, you could have thousands of blades of grass. Dozens of snails eat those thousands of blades of grass. And from those dozens of snails, one bird eats the snails. So there is more grass than there are snails, there are more snails than there are birds. You're working up from producers to primary consumers to secondary consumers in this fairly standard pyramid shape. What can sometimes happen though is that you can have a very like, large producer in a food chain and there's only one of them or only a few of them. So in this case there could be a tree. The tree is a producer, it still needs to be on the bottom but there's only one of them. From that one tree, hundreds of aphids, little plant-eating insects, could be gaining their energy from the one tree. From those hundreds of aphids, dozens of ladybirds could be eating the aphids. And from those ladybirds, one bird could be eating the ladybirds. So from the consumer side of the pyramid, you're getting a pyramid shape. But it's an irregular pyramid because the one tree in this pyramid of numbers, although it's providing a lot of energy, although it is a producer, there is only one of them, and that is how it can look strange. The same can happen with consumers. You could have this thousands of blades of grass again. You could have a hundred gazelle eating the blades of grass. You could have 10 lions eating the gazelle. But you could have a thousand ticks that would technically in this case be above the lions because they are gaining their energy from the lions. There are much more ticks than there are lions you often get this with other types of parasite as well. So in this case, the tertiary consumer would actually be a bigger block in the pyramid. So again, pyramid numbers are fairly common sense, but watch out for these little trick ones where sometimes the numbers cause a strange looking pyramid. The second type of pyramid we're going to look at works in exactly the same way, but it's just working on energy. So a pyramid of energy illustrates the productivity of organisms. So it illustrates the amount of energy being produced by those organisms. And this is measured as kilojoules per square metre per year, or as you can see the equation here. So for example, going back to grass, you could see there is 93,000 kilojoules per square metre per year being produced. From the consumers and those snails, there might be 15,000 kilojoules per square metre per year produced. And above then, you can have 1,200 kilojoules per square metre per year being produced by the birds. Again, it is decreasing as you go up the levels in the food chain or as you go up the blocks in the pyramid, and you're just able to see at a glance what how much energy is being produced by each level of the food chain. So that is all of Key Year 4. It's fairly straightforward and you just need to remember about the energy loss that works its way through a food chain and how that energy is lost. If you can compare the pyramids of numbers and pyramids of energy and be able to make your own ones through some examples, that'd be very helpful for you as well. There's a couple of PowerPoint questions here that I'm going to throw in also. So one past paper question is state one way in which energy may be lost between stages in a food chain. So hopefully you can remember that energy can be lost either between uh, from heat, movement or undigested materials. Any one of those will get you a mark in this. For your second question, we're looking at a pyramid of numbers and straight away you'll be able to tell that this is quite an irregular pyramid. However, it's a multiple choice question and you have the levels of the pyramid A, B, C and D. The question is which letter represents the producer. You should know that regardless of how it looks, the producer is always on the bottom. So in this case, it would be D and it's likely that this would be something like the one tree that we've had a look at in the pyramid of numbers. And finally, this other multiple choice question on pyramids. It asks you here, there's a, a pyramid shape on the pyramid of energy. There's a lot less energy at level X, the top of the pyramid, because A, there are fewer organisms at this level, B, energy is stored at each level, C, energy is lost at each level, or D, the organisms are bigger at this level. 
So hopefully you should remember that energy has got nothing to do with there being fewer organisms or that the organisms are bigger or energy being stored. You have to remember the whole point of this key area is that energy is lost at each level of the pyramid. So the reason why there is more energy at Z than there is at X is because as you go from Z to Y to X, you're losing energy each time. So thank you again for listening to all of these. I hope these have been useful for you. There was only two more lessons to go in Unit 3, and uh, we'll hopefully get them uploaded very soon to you. Uh, and again, if you're trying to work your way through these just now in preparation for your prelims coming up, very best luck for those. Okay, thanks so much for listening, guys. I'll get the rest of the uploaded very